let's look at an example of writing complex Python code. This is a unit test, and it's a test for a class called records by date. Now, what is records by date about? Well, it has a method, a class method called readCSV. It takes in a CSV file, and we have an example of that right here. Pretty simple, right? has some columns for date, email, status, source, and just a few rows of test data that we're using in this unit test. And what this class does, instances of it will allow you to access it using the square brackets like a dictionary. That's what we want. And the keys of that dictionary are dates, and the values of it are going to be the dictionary of that row in the CSV file. So how do we do this? Okay, what we're going to do is just make that test pass. And we're going to import some things, right? Date time module, CSV module. Now we're also going to use Python's date util module. It's not in the standard library, it's in the ecosystem, but it's a very useful library. And it has a function in its date util.parser submodule has a function called parse. And that's a vague name, so I'm going to rename that. Because in realistically complex software, you're going to have a whole lot of code pulled from many different sources, right? So we have it as parse date time is what I'm going to rename it because that's what it does. It takes a string and gives us an instance of the date time class. Okay, so now we're ready to write the records by date class. Now going back to the test, see what do we need to do? Well, we need to basically give it a read CSV class method. Now, if you don't know about class methods, they're a way to essentially create an alternate constructor and they're useful for other purposes as well, but it's a method that's attached to the class itself. But we also still need a regular constructor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this class a dictionary called data, okay? And the interface in our test is this class method. Notice the first argument is not self, it's CLS, okay? And it takes the argument path to the CSV file. So what we're gonna do is construct a dictionary mapping date objects to rows. Remember, if we look at this, this is what we want the values of data to be. So let's do that. Okay, so we're gonna open this file for reading. We're gonna use a dict reader in the CSV module. Okay, now the first column in that CSV file is date, lowercase. We're using this parse date time function, which remember is the readable name we gave the parse function that we imported from dateutil.parser. And this function returns an instance of date time, but we actually want it to be an instance of date. Now, date time objects have a method called date that will convert it, essentially just stripping out the time information and returning an instance of the date class. Exactly what we want here. And then we say data when equals row. Okay, so that establishes the mapping. Now, interestingly, we could have combined these two lines into one line, couldn't we? We are creating a temporary variable when that is not used outside of these two lines, but I deliberately split it up because what you see here is much more readable. This is a consideration that's very, very important when you're writing realistically complex software. Okay, now, once we've constructed that data dictionary, turn an instance of records by date in the variable called class, that's where the class objects are stored, just passing it in there. Okay, so now this is good because we have a separation. We have a regular constructor and we have a class method read CSV. And this is really good. Now, we also need to make the square brackets work. Remember, 
What we want is we want this syntax, this dictionary-like syntax to work. We can type R-E-C-S, open square bracket, and pass it an instance of the date class. We, how do we make that work? Well, the way we make that work is with a magic method, a dunder method, called get item, double underscore get item, double underscore, or dunder get item for short is the verbal shortcut we use for double underscore methods like this. Then self comma when, and we just look up in self dot data. Okay, so let's test it here. Okay, so you put it in a bug. That's why we write unit tests, right? Of course, this is a very simple example, and fortunately, it's very simple to fix. And what I did forget to do was I forgot to create the starting dictionary. So let's go ahead and run the test now, see if that works. And it does. Perfect.